is only one thing that will break the yoke that is held over the hearts and minds of men today in this world and is exemplified by the region here in San Diego that we live in and that is the power of God that is revealed through those who live out the life of Jesus and function and operate in the authority of His name. For all authority is given in the name of Jesus so that every principality and every power and every stronghold that would stand against the truth that would stand against the love of God, that would try to blind the hearts and minds of men, would be broken. And so, we pray today that you begin to take a hold of this wonderful and abundant light that is in Christ Jesus, that has been supplied to us by the Holy Ghost, and you begin to live for Him like never before. Hallelujah. You begin to live your life just, you know, worshiping and praising. I, I think that people get overwhelmed with all the things that they're supposed to be doing and how to please God. I tell you how to please God. Worship Him in the Holy Ghost and truth. That's what He wants. That's what He's been looking for. I hope we get simplified here today for you and you begin to live an abundant life. And ain't nobody been living an abundant life sad, depressed, and stressed out. But you begin to live an abundant life that's full of joy unspeakable. That's one of the first keynotes of an abundant life. Ha, ha, ha. Woohoo! Yeah. And somebody said, "Wow, my goodness, you you you're all excited about these things." Yeah, the Holy Ghost filled me up with a river of excitement. I'm telling you. And you know, God wants you to have the, the Father wants you to have the life of the life of the Son, Christ Jesus. He wants you to have His life. He wants you to have the life of the Holy Ghost. And we're here to teach you how to live that life, and here to point out to you the things that. The compromises that would keep you from ever having this life. Many people have never stepped into this life because they've never really realized their compromises. They've never really realized consciously that they've been yielding their members to the wrong things. That they've been allowing things that God has said should not be in our lives to function in our life. And some, some people just comes right down to sorrow and sadness. They allow that to happen. I mean, you know, I tell you right now, life without Christ Jesus is depressing. <laughs> but life in Him, I'm telling you, it's a good life. It doesn't matter where you're at. You could be in prison somewhere in one of the nations that are so opposed to the gospel that they just imprison people for preaching. Or you could be right here in San Diego where there's all kinds of other things to be depressed about. But, uh, or you can live in heaven. You can be ca captivated in a heavenly realm. And people think that heaven's way, way up there somewhere. No, no, no. Heaven's right here. Heaven's wherever Jesus is. Heaven's wherever his glory is. Heaven's wherever his church is. Heaven is heaven. Somebody say, how can I know the true church? It's heaven. And, so, you know, how can I know a true Christian? It's heavenly. They're heavenly. They're living in heaven. And living in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. You know, people running around looking for the true church. I've been running around looking for true Christians. Ha-ha. Yeah. <laughs> we had turned the tables on this thing. Hallelujah. Praise God. Ha-ha. <laughs> Hallelujah. Somebody, we, we heard people talk about, well, we're looking for true leaders. Well, I'm looking for some true followers. Ha-ha-ha. <laughs> we're looking for really anointed preachers. Well, I'm looking for some really anointed servants of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> you know. It, Satan plays his game right, left, and center, coming and going. Got people messed up with all kinds of things. I'm just telling you, just get over here in a place of loving the one who so loved you that he purchased your salvation at Calvary. Get over to this place of being continually filled with the Holy Ghost. And then let's go ahead and talk. Let's sit down and talk after that. Go ahead and participate with what it really means to redeem the times for the days are evil. What it really means to be filled with the Spirit continually. What it means to love the Word of God as the prophecy is going forth. I'm telling you right now, I'm so blessed by what God is doing in the meeting. I'm so blessed by the things that the Lord is doing through Ruth Anna's life and the prophetic voice of heaven. You know, the world doesn't like that. Compromise doesn't like that prophetic voice. They don't, they don't like that, that ferocious sound of, I'm going to tell you right now, the wrath of God's about to be poured out and you need to get right. <laughs> People don't like that voice. They don't want to hear that voice. But you need to hear that voice because unless you hear the voice, how are you going to ever escape the wrath that is to come? People, people think that 
father's this big Jovian guy, you know, that just tolerates everything. No, he's not. He's so full of love and life and, and wonder and beauty that it can't, can't even be described. And he hates iniquity and his wrath burns against everything that looks like sin and compromise. Amen. People are just going to have to get it because they've been indoctrinated by humanism, indoctrinated by the things of this world. And we want you to get broken free here today. Just understand what it means to just live in his glory and live in his presence. Because you do, the fire of his ways and will will begin to burn in your life in such a passionate way. That first and foremost, you're not going to tolerate things in your own personal life that is opposed to him. And then you're going to be full of the zeal of the Lord about seeing everybody else broken free from the imprisonment, the lies, the deception. It's terrible to see people living in deception. It's terrible to see people living in bondage, living in sickness and sorrow and pain and suffering. And, you know, we just like to talk real gentle to everyone, you know. But, you know what, it comes to the point, you're going to have to start screaming and hollering to get the job, to get the job done. And everybody knows that. How, how, how many people in here has never screamed and hollered about things you wanted? Would you raise your hand? And nobody, i say it again. Is there, you raise your hand if you've never screamed or hollered about the things you desperately wanted. That just don't even exist in humanity. Don't even exist. You're going to scream and holler about the things that's d important to you. And maybe I'm going to do all my screaming and hollering in the kingdom. I'm going to do all my screaming and hollering in the things concerning what's real, not what's of self-interest. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, you can be seated here today. I want to spend some time this morning teaching you some things by the Spirit of the Lord. So that you can begin to understand the call of God upon your life. The purposes of God for your life. Just, I'll have Joshua just sing for us. I mean uh, play for us a little bit here. So the, uh, then that way the, the traffic sound can be background music. <laughs> Hallelujah. Woohoo. I tell you. I am so blessed to be living in heaven today. I'm telling you. Now listen to me. Uh, you know, in, in Deuteronomy chapter 11, uh, God said, if you just obey me and walk with me, you'll have days of heaven upon the earth. And uh, how much more now that we live in this new covenant and where Father has poured out upon us abundance of grace and has given to us an unlimited measure of his divine presence. And he called us to come in to begin to experience Everything that he is and stand in the holies of holies should we now live in a heavenly realm, live a days of heaven upon earth. The only reason people don't live a days of heaven upon earth is because one of two reasons. Either they don't understand it, they don't understand how to live the life they've not been taught, or they, they've compromised with hell and you can't have heaven and hell too. You can't have night and day too. You can't have darkness and light at the same time. It can't be a lie and the truth at the same time. It's got to be one or the other. You know what I'm telling you? And so, you know, it's just our so hearts are so desperate to help people understand how easy it is to live the heavenly, uh, heavenly life. I don't care how hard you had to work. I'm going to tell you that ain't going to keep you from the heavenly life. I don't care how much sleep you deprived of because you're running so hard. It's not going to keep you from living the heavenly life. I don't care how much money you don't have to do all the things that you think that you want to do and need to do. It's not going to keep you from living the heavenly life. There are no earthly excuses. <laughs> all you got to do is say, you know what? I'm going to go ahead. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to receive this new birth. I'm going to be born again. And I'm going to enter into the realm called the kingdom of God. I'm going to enter into a realm called the kingdom of the dear son that Paul talked about in Colossians 1 and 13. And that Jesus, of course, talked about in John 3 and 3 through 6. I'm going to go ahead and enter in this realm. Can everybody hear me? Some of you look like you're thinking about other things. You need to be thinking about this thing. There's too many distractions. People too many, too, they've been trained. Their minds have been trained only to think and focus for 30 seconds. That is a sad thing. That's the way that's that's the way that this modern culture has trained people to think. Fifteen to thirty seconds. And then they're on to something else. Nonsense. We gotta grab a hold of you. I grab a hold of you right now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I go to Manjas every day. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. We take a hold of your spirit by the Holy Spirit. 
to begin to hear the things of the Spirit. I don't like to look at people who ought to be able to flow in the Holy Ghost and see that they are not even here in their spirit. It bothers me greatly because there's something that's captured your mind and your thoughts that's preoccupying your life. And we want you to stop that because I'm going to tell you right now, when it's happening here, it's happening continually through your life and it's keeping you from living the kind of life that Jesus died for us and, and paid in his blood for us to have and rose again and secured when he rose up from the dead for us forevermore, a place in him that he gave to us abundantly when he poured out the Holy Ghost upon us. Hallelujah. And, and gave to us everything that goes way beyond that which Daniel had. It goes way beyond that which Moses had. It goes way beyond those who literally shook kingdoms in their day and time. If there's anything that we now have got to become is something far more than just marginalized. Just people all there over there in that building. They're doing their religious thing. And they all sell us thinking that they got something more than the Hindus. Or they got something more than the Muslims. They think they're a special group. Oh, they're just narrow-minded. It's about time that there's some proof that there is something very special about the church of Jesus Christ. And those things in our life are formed right here because there's all kinds of responses in the church place to the Word of God. People, you're going to have to capture with your spirit what God said in His Word if it's ever going to become a living reality in your life and the expressions of what you're doing with your life. People believe that they're going to heaven, but they're not. They've been captured, netted by religion. I want to just, maybe some of you are visiting here. I believe in, a, in something that God has placed in the church that people don't like. He's placed in the church tongues and interpretation of tongues. He's placed it just as much in the church as he's placed apostles, as he's placed prophets and teachers and, and miracles and gifts of healing. We read about it, and it's very clear in the scripture. It's on, it's on deniably the truth and the Word of God. It's in the Word of God. It's just as much the Word of God as Jesus is the Son of God. You're listening to me. And and um, so you'll hear me speak in this heavenly language, and I'm always interpreting. I'm always interpreting. Now, there'll be times where we'll go for long stretches, like if you come to some of the meetings, and there'll be long stretches of just that language going forth, but then it's going to break forth into a song or it's going to break forth into another message, okay, as we wait upon the Lord. But we're always moving. We don't just, we don't speak in this uh, heavenly language without the interpretation of it. It just, don't, we don't do it the way that people have, you know, religiously kind of modeled it, you know. You know, where somebody speaks a heavenly language and then you wait two, three minutes and then somebody starts screaming out, Thus saith the Lord, hear ye the Lord's word now. And, or God has come to you in your midst or whatever, you know. It, it, because that's not what it's about. It's for us to have a direct word from heaven to hear what Father is saying to us now. Huh. Hallelujah. I mean, the only time Paul said, Bond didn't say, Thus saith the Lord, he was just constantly saying, I'm speaking now. If he had anything to say outside of what God was saying, he said, Now this is me and not the Lord. So he highlighted when he was speaking. He didn't highlight when the Lord was speaking because that was just the default. That's just the way it's supposed to be all the time. And so we want you to understand that things are supposed to be real in our lives that God has described in his word. They're supposed to be an everyday, ongoing, natural way of which, in which we live, in which we function, in which we move. But when there's compromises in our life, it's going to shut down this natural flow. Then all you're going to have to do is go find yourself some religious substitutes and try to be something on a church day that you're not on every day. God wants you to, God wants Father's purpose that what happens on the church day is an explosion of greater expression of what you live out every day in the realms of heaven. Come on now. Hallelujah. And if the world begins to see such a people around us, there is going to be a witness that Father is going to get involved in. See, Papa says, Father says, you can't be my witnesses until you endued with power from on high. And so people run around trying to be his witnesses and wonder why God ain't working with them. Because he ain't going to work with them until they, they endued with power from on high. So you can go do your religious thing all you want wonder why God ain't on the scene. He's not going to be on the scene until major things begin to change. And we live in a day now where... 
motivational speakers have been were, were basically anointed by the people to be the ones that are bringing us the word of God and the motivational speakers confirm sin to the point that now people live lives of compromise and iniquity and they don't even know where to start I don't even know where to begin and I'm just so happy that things are getting to be exposed now things are being exposed right left and center right now as people are now deciding which side they're really on because to be on God's side at this point in time with all the things that have happened you got to come out and you got to boldly state at a price and at a cost to you what you believe about the word of God and we're finding out that many of these people with great big churches and great big names really they've always been on the side of compromise they've always been on the side of, of living out another word instead of God's word now you start having somebody teach you about how to live a life of, of sanctification it's a lost doctrine I'm gonna, and I'm going to talk to you today about sanctification and what it means to be set apart into the Holy Ghost. To not be a part of this world anymore. To come out from among them. To live your life in the holies of the holies. To understand that you were sanctified. To live in the Holy Ghost. Sanctified to live in all the fruits of the Spirit. Sanctified to live in all the manifestation of the Spirit. Sanctified to live out your life. Your, your spirit submitted to the Holy Spirit. People want a different way. They believe different things. They've complicated the gospel to the point they're so confused they don't even know what to do. Are you listening to me? They're so confused they're lost in the woods. They have no idea what the blood of Jesus did when he washed their sins away. They really have no idea what God did when he poured out the Holy Ghost upon us, giving us the privilege and the ability to live this life of God, this abundant life. You know, I, a preacher, preacher t told me, he texted me last night, and very famous guy and he says to me says pastor mark we're going to have to bring revival to this nation i said well just go tell the church that they backslidden and they worst off than israel ever was off and then that'll begin why they he didn't text back for about five or ten minutes because you start telling the church that they backslid and they're not living right with God. You're going to sound just like Isaiah. You're going to sound just like Jesus did. You're going to be just as hated, just as rejected. People look at you with a cross, confused look. I'm going to tell you right now, you begin to talk about these things of God. and People are going to mock you and laugh at you as much as they did when Noah was building an ark. You're listening to me. You're going to laugh just as much about sanctification and holiness and righteousness and purity. It'd be, preachers today, if they're going to preach on sanctification, they'd have to redefine what it means. Because sanctification means that you're now separated to live in the holies of holies. Hallelujah. And, and then the holiness movement trying to figure out, oh, no, what new clothes do they need to wear? and How, they need, how do they need to fix their hair now? And what new bonnet do they need to wear? Holies of holies, living in the very glory of Almighty God. Living in his righteousness and in his holiness and his purity. Living in his generosity and his kindness and his mercy. Living in his joy and his peace and his long suffering. Living in his goodness. Let the world start seeing that instead of a bunch of frowny, sorrowful faces of people who don't have what the world has and don't have what heaven has. You know what I'm saying? Come on now. Too many people in the world are happy because they got the world. At least they got the world. They're all in. They got everything they get out of the world. Huh? You listen to me. But God's people, so many people, they've they, they, they basically got enough commitment to God to not have everything in the world. You know, at least not publicly. They kind of got a bunch of hypocrisy going on to it secretively. Huh? But, but. Worse than that, they're missing out on all that heaven's good supply and all that they could have and live in. Hallelujah. This is what we want to teach you. We want to teach you these things. And so I want you to open your Bibles, and I'm going to read a couple verses of Scripture to you. So go to first, uh, Second Thessalonians, excuse me, Second Thessalonians chapter 2. Second Thessalonians chapter 2 is a powerful chapter in the Bible of Revelation. But I am so I am really impressed, most of all, by the revelation that is given in verse 13. In contrast to those who might believe a lie and be damned, 
Are you listening to me? In contrast to those who would believe a lie, who've forsaken the truth, that have no pleasure, but, but they believe a lie, they have pleasure in unrighteousness. How many people here today, you have pleasure in unrighteousness? Would you raise your hands? You have pleasure in sin. I have pleasure in righteousness and obedience. Hallelujah. I have pleasure. I have pleasure in doing what's right, not in what's doing what's wrong. I have pleasure in walking in the one who gives joy rather than trying to wring some kind of fake joy out of something that's really demonic. And then the Lord says in contrast to that in verse 13, he says, But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you. Why? Beloved of the Lord, because God had from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Holy Ghost and the belief of the truth. See, the Holy Spirit, he has come to lead us and to guide us into all truth. The Holy Spirit has come to teach us and give to us everything that belongs to God. The Holy Spirit comes to convey to us What's in the holies of holies? You know what's in the holies of holies? Pleasure forevermore. You know what's in the holies of holies? The scripture says, in his presence is fullness of joy. And at his right hand are pleasures forevermore. See, Satan's got people literally living, literally living in the cesspool of existence. Living in the septic tank of existence. Just to get real gross with it. And that, and you're living around in that, just, and there's where you find whatever pleasures or whatever thrill you can get or whatever you relief you can get from the pain. Are you with me? Huh? But God's got a realm of pleasures that nobody knows about until they enter into the kingdom of God through the door of Christ Jesus. Till the Spirit of the Lord comes upon them and fills them with everything that is evidence. I hear people all the time. They try to say, yes, um, I've been born again. Yes, I, I, I believe God and I walk with God. And they don't have joy in their life. Well, they don't have the evidence. Uh, they don't have the witness of the Holy Ghost. They don't have peace in their life. That, what, try, what, kind of, what kind of tale are you trying to tell? What kind of story are you trying to pull over on people? What kind of wool are you trying to bring down over top of somebody's eyes, especially your own eyes? You better be conformed to this world. Huh? If you're going to listen to what Satan has got to say. But you better be conformed to Christ Jesus if you're going to listen to what God has to say. And I'm telling you, there's a lot of compromises going on. Last night, I mean, I, I'm just going to lay it out there. Last night, there was this young woman, and uh, she posted something that was totally indecent and immodest. It was a, uh, some kind of, you know, beauty contest they had going on in her state. And the girl is in a, just dressed so immodestly. I mean, she's got a seriously... You know, lacking bikini on, and she's got under under this. She's got titled "How Wonderful This Woman Is," and I so I messaged her because I believe that you should, you know, there's certain things you should just keep it between you and the person. I said you need to repent that you are promoting the demonic lies and the demonic strongholds of this age. And she re emailed me back and she said, "Repent of what? What are you talking about?" I said, "I'm talking about specifically," and I told her. And now she can't say anything. Why? Because people have been so seared by the culture. Their minds and conscience have been so seared by the culture. They can't imagine that a woman standing there naked is something wrong with that. Their, their minds and their conscience has been so seared by the, the deception of Satan. And then it's been condoned. By the people preaching and saying, oh, well, that's just what we do. That's just the modern age. And it's contrary to everything that we're supposed to be when we're a part of that which belongs to holiness. Holiness does have dress to it. Holiness has action to it. Holiness has character to it. Holiness has conduct to it. And that holiness is seen and described in the ways of the living God. And when the Lord talks to us about having been born again, 
he describes to us now being now recreated in his image and his likeness. We've been renewed. We once had his image and his likeness in every dimension. But now, but because of Adam's sin, it was lost. And then he tells us that it's been renewed to us again. It's been brought back to us again through the new birth, through the new creation. And now God says he sanctified us to live in the Holy Ghost, to live in the Spirit. We've been sanctified for the purpose or set apart for the purpose of living in this wonderful realm of the Holy Ghost. Living in this wonderful realm of the Holy Spirit. Now, I want you to look at another verse of Scripture with me real quickly. And um, and it, it goes along with this because I really want to emphasize set apart to live in the Holy Ghost so that we might believe the truth. And so that we might understand the truth. So that we might accept the truth, to live the truth. And Peter says it in a similar way in 1 Peter chapter 1. And, um, and I, I'll pick it up at verse 13. He says, Gird up the loins of your mind, be sober. Have confidence unto the end for the grace that is to be brought to you by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Verse 14. As obedient children, say obedient children, not fashioning yourself according to the former lust in your ignorance. What is that? That's everything that's going on in the world. That's what is worldly. That worldly and sinful and iniquity are all equivalent. We've received the lobotomy from hell and believe that it's okay that somehow God has now sanctified sin. He's not sanctified sin. The wrath of God still abides upon sin. He has sanctified the truth. He's sanctified the opposite of sin, which is righteousness. It's the conduct of God. Listen to me. Righteousness is the conduct and ways and character of God. Sin is the conduct and ways and characters of Satan. It's just that simple. And whatever you're fellowship, fellowshipping with, that is whom you are a part of. That is who you build. That's the company that you belong to. And so, you know, when we're talking about the former lust of our ignorance, we're talking about the lust of the flesh. We're talking about the lust of the eye. And we're talking about the pride of life. All that is in this world. I'm going to tell you, people, you just listen to me right now. You better get ready because I'm telling you it's about to come down. It's look, there's no turning it back now. It's already the decree has already gone forth. Right, there was great revivals in the Civil War, but what's getting ready to happen is far greater than the Civil War because there'll be a foreign invader upon the soil of America. And now all of a sudden, the, 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 the love of ease and, and, the, and the prideful acts that a, each person has given themselves to the, in which they really blinded their own minds and hearts will have no more place to even work under such turmoil. But I praise God for his mercy. I'm going to tell you right now, God's, when, when you're chasing of the Lord, you're judged of the Lord that you be not condemned with the world. And somebody said, what would you liken America unto right now? I'd say 1914, Russia in 1914. A people who had been graced by the Lord to so move in the Holy Ghost and have the torch of heaven to evangelize the world. All they could do is sit around and congratulate themselves about who they were with respect to you know, the church and the priests and the preachers and what the, they were arguing about what were the right robes to wear and arguing about who really knew what was right with God and just a bunch of nonsense going on. Meanwhile, all kinds of sin and iniquity was taking place in their lives. And it wasn't long after that in the Bolshevik Revolution to, began to, to take place and it was nothing but mayhem. A, a holy nation, a nation separated to God became nothing but turmoil and mayhem. People sit around and think, oh, well, that can't happen here in America. Watch. I'm going to tell you right now, something far worse is getting ready to happen. I'm going to tell you what is getting ready to happen. Everybody's getting ready to stand before a living God giving account for their souls. That's why you better get ready to meet your God. You better get ready to meet your God. Because all of what you believe and all about what you think you, is going to be not, not even relevant. He will judge you according to his word and every mouth will be silenced before him. It's time to wake up, people. God has given to us such a privilege to live in heaven and we act like it's some kind of hardship. God has given us preachers and ministers of gifts 
with, with uh, of the Holy Ghost to begin to declare His Word, make known His ways, and show people how to live and function in this life that is so abundant. And we look cross at them because we don't agree with them. When all the time all they're doing is laboring to bring us over into a heavenly realm to teach us how to continually give ourselves and yield our members to the things that God the Holy Ghost is doing that would correct us for the things that are going on in our life that is wrong at, at disposition, action, demeanor, ways, conduct, behavior. Well, we want to become obedient children to the Word of God, to the Spirit of the Lord. And right in the big middle of the Word of God going forth and the Spirit of the Lord being ministered is a preacher. Someone separated by God for house of the year unless there be a preacher. And how shall there be a preacher unless they be sent and fundamental to the church as apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. And just because so many people have been deluded and deceived by things that, that popular opinion has tried to promote, then change the word of God. Everybody is going to have to stand guilty before the Lord who's not been willing to hear the word of God because now the Bible has been more made more available to all people across the world than ever before. Today in this generation, we have more and do less with it. And it's time we understand that God has given us all the resources that we need to begin to impact government at the highest levels. I mean, Daniel impacted government at the highest levels. They looked at him and said, he has the Spirit of God. <laughs> I tell you right now, it's evident when the Spirit of God exists. And one of the things about the Spirit of God that they noticed with Daniel was his countenance. His behavior. Not only his countenance and his behavior, but I'm telling you right now, when you live happy and thankful, you're smarter. That's right. You're not all bound down with sorrow and shame. People live, I mean, tell you right now, people, listen, it's like a magnet. If you're more earthly, your face is drawn towards the ground. If you're more heavenly, your face is drawn towards the heavens. It's just like a magnet. I'm telling you right now, there's a lot of people just go around saying that they heavenly, they've been born again. They don't have, they don't look heavenly. They're not heavenly. They mind in earthly things, and that's why their heart's so full of sorrow. That's why they're so full of fear. That's why they're so full of complaint. Get around them, hang around them too much, or you hear somebody's got some serious problem. They're always grouchy, grumpy, got something bad to say, harsh to say, short to say, because they're not living in heaven. They don't know what it means to live in the glory where the rivers of his expression and his goodness is flowing out. And that's, that's the church is ineffective. That's why the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, by and large, we've not, we've not known how to function and flow in the Holy Ghost. And so uh, churches that are just compromising motivational speakers telling people about how wonderful they are and how they can achieve great things and how their destiny can't be hindered by anything they've done wrong in the past. People just gobble that up. It's amazing. They still just as ugly, sad, sorrowful, and poor, but they're happy about hearing somebody tell them how great they are and how that their destiny hasn't been interrupted, how they can feel better about themselves. I don't want you to feel better about yourself. I want you to feel better about your redemption. I want, you to, I want you to get all captivated by who you are. I want you to get all captivated by who he is. I want you to think about what you can do through you. I want you to think about what you can do in him. I want you to think about what you can be now in this life. I want you to think, I want you to think about what you can be through this life and throughout all eternity in him, in Jesus. Hallelujah. See, the proof that you've been born again means that you overcome the world. And what happens? We say that and people start redefining. Oh, they just start redefining. No, if you've been born, he, he, he now exists and lives and dwells on the inside of us. And anyone who has Christ Jesus in them, greater is he that is in them than he that is in the world. And this is how we've overcome the world. This is how we've walked in the truth rather than being deceived by the lie. And this is that wonderful work that we've been set apart for. God set us apart, sanctified us to live in the Holy Ghost. Now, well, if you understood what it means to live in the Holy Ghost, then why is it that you're not willing to be consecrated to that which God consecrated you to? 
The Lord says he's purified us from all of our sins in his own blood and demands that we remain pure. For he says everyone who has this confidence of being the sons of God purified themselves even as he's pure. That's 1 John chapter 3 verses 3 through 4. He, the scripture says that we, if we are in him, that we are to walk even as he walks. That's first, that's first John chapter 2 verse 6. The scripture says as he is in this world, so are, as, as he is, so are we now in this world at this very moment in time. First John 4, 17. Listen to me. Everybody who's been born of God purifies himself from all the filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfect in holiness. In the gift of holiness that we've received. Boy, that's talking about a consecrated life. That's talking about sanctified. I've been sanctified by the blood of Jesus Christ to live the life of God. I've been sanctified by the, by the Spirit of the Lord, by the Holy Ghost, to live in the Holy Ghost. I've been sanctified by God the Father to live my life fully in Christ Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit. Do you hear me? Well, then what are you doing with your time? Somebody said, how do I do that? Be filled with the Spirit. Have you begun in the Holy Ghost now to be made perfect by your own human ability? God forbid, it ain't going to happen. But now if you would be, you'd be willing to be continually filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and make a melody in your, God, uh, in your heart unto God, giving thanks always for all things. Come on. So you all of a sudden say when you start getting, you know, upset and begin to act, you know, ornery, you say, Lord, fill me with your joy right now. Forgive me and fill me with your joy right now. Huh? You have anything less than this love of God that compels you to just, just to show His love. You start, you just repent and say, Father, forgive me for doing it my own way. Holy Spirit, come fill me. Pour your love into me right now. Fill me up with this love. Let your love, let your, let your kissy, huggy, forgiving, merciful, don't have anything against anyone for any reason at any time. Love, fill me now. I go lay down my life for anybody. Fill me now. Hallelujah. Isn't that not, you know what's going to happen? Suddenly a light's going to begin to shine and there's going to be a difference is going to be begin to be, to be made. We hear in, in 1 John, forgive me, 1 Peter, he says, listen to this, verse 15. He says, as obedient children, not fashioning yourself according to your former lust. In other words, not having fellowship with the world, have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather get up in their face and tell them to stop it now. Now, that's what the Word of God says. It says, have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Reprove them. Say, listen, that for these things, the wrath of God comes upon the children of disobedience. Understand, there are children of obedience and there are children of disobedience. God, Jesus was shown to be the Son of God by the Spirit of holiness and by the Spirit of obedience and by the Spirit of power. God, those who follow Christ Jesus, those that are truly His followers, act and behave themselves as He acted and as He behaved because as He is, so are we now in this world. And as you have received Christ Jesus, so walk ye in Him. Hello. And that's Colossians 2, verse 6, in case you've never read that. Huh? Oh, well, the Lord knows that we're just human. We're going to sin more or less every day. That's nonsense. It's lies. How, how, do you, how do you have a defense to purify yourself even as he is pure? How do you have a defense to be strong in the strength of the Lord, to stand up against the powers of darkness that would try to impose everything that is unlike God upon you? You're defeated before you start. You know nothing about the spirit of holiness. You know nothing about the call of God. Listen to what he says. But as he which is called you is holy, be ye also holy in every dimension of your life. What is holiness? It's complete separation from everything that belongs to a demonic world. In conduct, behavior, attitude. Come on now. Listen, we all have to face temptation. But we're going to have to be equipped and fortified to know how to come up against it and stand against it and not be contaminated by it, not be made unclean by it. Touch not the unclean thing, God said, and I shall receive you. That's what God says. Oh, the Lord just got love. It's just love, and he's just loving everybody all the time. No, it's not what he says. 
there is a strict observance to do walking with God. He loves all mankind so much that he made a way for man to, be, to escape the iniquity and sin of this world to come and live with him, but he's never going to compromise with the world. How are you going to ever understand how to be equipped to face the temptation with the radical determination for which Christ Jesus demonstrated when he went to the cross for you? If you're not equipped to deal with a, with a radical commitment of obedience, there's no way that you're going to be able to stand. When temptation comes at you tomorrow, you're going to compromise with it, and it's not going to be so bad, and everybody does it, and so you're going to partake of it, and all that's going to happen is you're going to be that much more whittled down in your spirit. Your resolve is going to be that much more weakened, threatened, thinned out. Come on now. We're going to talk to you. You get up and walk out on God when God is speaking. You get up and walk out when God is speaking. You're walking out on God. It's a demonic power that has influence in your life. You listen to me. Listen to me. You better hear me. There's things always manifesting. Whether or not we are walking with God as obedient children or disobedient children. It's always, it's always being manifest. And when you begin to get the fear of the Lord in your life. When you begin to understand what it means to purify yourself from all the filthiness, sin. That's what filthiness. Come out, come out from among them and touch not the unclean thing. That's sin. A call to be separate from the world, to not be conformed to the world in any way. Worldliness. It's another word. It's another. It's a synonym for sin. It's dressing like they dress. It's acting like they act. It's liking what they like. Never has, never has Hollywood been so dark. The prophets prophesied about it when it first began to happen. Now, you know, you look at what they did with Noah and you look at what they did with Moses. It's just so dark, so evil. There's no inspiration of God there. There's nothing about reality there. It's just, it's just, it's designed and orchestrated. It's how Satan preaches the word of God. And we just are so, we are so integrated into this nonsense. People, it's about time you spend more, more of your time in the Holy Ghost. Don't worry about that old bug. He don't eat much. He be. He's been driven off by the Word of God. Hallelujah. He spent more time just in his presence, becoming just so blessed by living his life and walking in his love and being occupied with those pleasures that only he can bring. Every place else is going to become creepy to you. I'm telling you right now, I walk into a movie theater and it's creepy. All that there is to do is to preach the gospel because that's the only way you're going to run off all that demon spirit that is there in that place. It occupies the place. And people go in there and sit there and eat their popcorn and watch their whatever. Why? I mean, I mean it, at least just watch it at home in your living room. Like you're, surely your living room can't be that dark. And if it is, we'll come over to your house and anoint it with oil. But the reality of it is, you know, until you change, your house isn't going to change. Until what's going on inside of you changes, your bedroom ain't going to change, your living room ain't going to change, your kitchen ain't going to change, nothing going to change until you change on the inside. God, the Holy Ghost has brought change. People tell me, want to look at me and say, are you saying I'm not born again? I'm, I respond, I'm saying, are you living according to the Word of God? Are your fruits those which God's Word describes? Because you'll know everyone by their fruits. Do you have the witness of the Holy Ghost? The witness of the Holy Ghost. You've been set apart to live in the Holy Ghost. And the witness of the Holy Ghost is given over and over again. And one of the chief things is about the Holy Ghost is he brings the power of obedience. He brings the power of change. He brings the power of the love of God and the love for the things of, the, of heaven. He brings the glory uh, and disposition of all the goodness that God has and lives in to, into our lives. Why should we want anything else? 
Because as it is written, listen, be ye holy, for I am holy. I, I want you to just grab that. Just grab a hold of it. Just grab a hold of the reality of what the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth, is right now doing for you and me if we're willing to cooperate with Him and allow it to be done. Allow Him to have His perfect work in our life. Paul says in verse 2, Elect according to the foreknowledge. Um, forgive me, Peter says in verse 2, 1 Peter chapter 1. Peter says in verse 2 of 1 Peter chapter 1, Elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience. I was given the Holy Ghost. You are given the Holy Ghost to walk in perfect obedience, perfecting holiness in the fear of God, cleansing ourselves, purifying ourselves. So I said, wait a minute, I thought Jesus' blood cleanses and purifies. It did. It did. Now we're supposed to stay clean and purified. Huh? Because we can do exactly what Adam did. We can repeat it. We can go right back into sin because just because we were washed in the blood didn't mean temptation ended. Didn't mean the threats of this world uh, ultimately came to an end. You and I are going to face once again the same things that anybody else faced. Christ Jesus faced, Adam faced, and the Lord's saying no. He says, walk in obedience. Abstain from all appearance of the evil. Purify yourself even as he is pure. Walk as even as he walks. As you receive Christ Jesus, so walk in him. Walk in the Spirit, lead, led by the Spirit. Spirit, live by the Spirit. These are the sons of God. This is what God sanctified us by the Holy Ghost unto obedience to do. The Holy Spirit was given to us to walk in perfect obedience. The grace of God appeared to us, teaching us that we are to deny ungodliness and worldly lust, worldliness. You know, that right now in the United States of America, that goes over like a lead balloon. You put me in one of these big churches, motivational churches, and I preach that right now. They would never have me back, and they would shut me down before I got finished. They'd, they'd tell me that, because I've been there, they'd tell me the clock. I only got 30 minutes. Sorry, 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 bro. And they'd be talking how good and wonderful and anointed that is in front of me and go behind my back, tell me I'm just old-fashioned and, you know, living a life of weird holiness. That shows you how far we've drifted from truth. Because this is just baby stuff. This is, this is baby milk. All I'm teaching you here right now is baby is milk. It is not meat. God's people haven't been able to move on and enjoy the deeper things of the Spirit because they've not been willing to be rooted and grounded and settled in this love of God. They've not been willing to be consecrated and committed to a life of sanctification. I'm going to ask you, have you been sanctified? Set apart unto God. Then you're, you, you should have a commitment to live there, set apart unto Him. He's invited us in the holies of the holies. That should be the greatest invitation you ever received. Can you hear me? He invited you to come and live in the holies of the holies. And that should have been the greatest invitation. The greatest opportunity. Woo! The greatest occupation. Ha <laughs> ha. Ha ha. Hallelujah. That you get to live this life in God. I get to live the life of God. I get to live this life of Christ in, in God. I get to live this life of the Holy Ghost. Uh, I get to live this life uncontaminated by all the pollution that is in this world through its lust and its iniquity. Oh, my, my. What a blessing, eh? What a blessing. And the beautiful thing of it is his father's eyes go to and fro throughout the earth just looking somebody, just looking for somebody who has this heart to live right. And, he, and when he sees that, when he sees that, he comes with all his power and all his glory. And he gives us the might and he gives us the strength and he gives us the power. And he stands before all heaven and says, see, there's a man who follows me. See, there are those who love my salvation. Who, who don't want to live in the contamination of sin and iniquity and darkness. Oh, yeah. Father's eyes go to and fro. He's looking. People want to be justified in their rebellion and in their stubbornness of heart. They want to be justified in their unwillingness to obey God. And they will spend an eternity without God in a place called hell. And they will say, why is it that I'm here? I went to church. I said that Jesus Christ is my Lord. 
I paid my tithes. I taught in Sunday school. The Lord's going to say, you never did the will of the Father. You never were willing to face the rebellion and the stubbornness going on in your life. You were never willing to face the pride. All of that's the spirit of the world. And it's all encapsulated in the, not the lust of the flesh, not the lust of the eye, but the pride of life. It's all encapsulated there. You were never willing to deal with it. You were never willing to identify it. You had preachers come and labor to, and to identify it and to show it to you. And I gained by my spirit and I revealed it. And you were hard against what I revealed. You defied what I said to the point of stoning the prophets. People stone prophets every day. Even today, they stone them with their words. People strip the influence of Holy Ghost conviction from off of people who should be living under Holy Ghost conviction because of their wrongdoing. They take it away by coming and giving them words and saying, peace, peace, when there was no peace, and become false prophets. And now their blood is also upon their head for saying, peace, peace, to those who had no peace. And they, they, because they believe they're right, they didn't repent. And they'll be brought into question for their sin and their iniquity. For them causing someone to stumble. The Lord says it's better that you not enter into life than to cause one of the least of these little ones to stumble. See, people have no, no clue about what they're doing. And that's why we say many times, Father, forgive them for they have no idea what they're doing. Father, forgive them. Have mercy. They have no idea. They're little babies that think they're full-grown adults. They're people who can't see past the nose on their face and they believe that they have, a, they have you know, unlimited visibility. It's pride of life. The brokenness before the Lord changes all that dynamic. You become thirsty, you become hungry, you become a person that says, lead me, I want to know, God, show me. You become a sponge for everything that God is saying in His Word. It, His Word comes forth and you're broken, you receive it with, with, a, with a, a brokenness and a humility and a thanksgiving that cannot be matched by anything in this world, some that is born out of the heart of a child of God. People, you and I sit here in this place, the only possible remedy and cure for what is an incurable wound. America, spiritual condition of America, I was telling some preachers today, listen, it's not the government that needs to change. It's the church that needs to change. Once a church is repenting and is converted, then sinners will be converted. Once a church returns back to the Lord, once a church gets right, the government and the church is all messed up. The rebellion and the anarchy and the sedition in the church, and furthermore, the wrong leadership that is in the church, the, the wrong positions that the church has been taking, promoting things that are full of, of, of lust and evil. It's the church. The Lord was speaking to me last night about the incurable wound that Israel came to. God wrote Israel. God divorced Israel. God who hates divorce divorced Israel because it got because she became so rebellious. She became beyond hope, beyond being reached. He divorced her. And somebody said, well, his, his mercies are new every morning. Yeah, they are. But there comes a time where every man and every woman and every boy and every girl or go, a girl is going to have to decide whose side they're on. God will not always strive with men. There is a space and time to repent. And he himself has numbered those days for each one of us, for me, for you, for nations. He's numbered those days. God's got a calendar. Believe it. We can prove that over and again in the Scripture. He's got a calendar. It's uh, important that you and I apply our heart to wisdom and we begin to give ourselves to the Lord because I'm telling you, I told, I told my wife last night, I said, I said, honey, we got to get right. She said, what's up? I said, the Lord is coming with judgment and indignation against all sin. It was just so on me. I said, there can't be anything in our lives that is an offense to the Lord in any way. She said, well, honey, just if you see anything, let me know. I mean, I'm just prophesying. I'm just speaking by the Spirit of the Lord. People, you better get ready because you're sitting on things. People are sitting on false hopes. They're sitting on falsehoods, deceptions, and lies, and things that make believe. They've never had the fear of God. They've never had an awesome encounter with the presence of the Lord whose eyes are like a flame of fire that burns against sin and iniquity. He, the people of this think that God is a humanist, and it's okay. Everybody okay? It's not true. Father's coming with judgment. 
in holy indignation. His fire is in his eyes. He's coming with more than a whip to clean out his house. The day of the Lord is at hand. Do you believe me? Every man will stand before him and give an account for the deeds that are done in their body. Every person. I, I, I'm dedicated. I'm, I'm, I'm passionate about seeing everybody that's ever stepped into this place. This church that the Lord has given me a responsibility for. To make heaven. But I can force no man's will. I can see. I'm able to see. God has given me the privilege and the ability to be able to see. And what's going on. And things that hinder in your lives. But there are very few people that respond. As my dear wife did last night. As I'm screaming and hollering. You know. Under the anointing. We got to get right. The Lord is coming. They would say. If you see anything wrong whatsoever in my life. And she's going, amen, amen, amen. But if you see anything that's wrong in my life, let me know. Search me, O oh Lord. Try me, O oh God. How many thoughts do I allow to go on in my mind that are not thoughts, that are not met with the strength of the Lord and the power of His might, that are not met with the power of the living God that has been given to us to deal with sin? Think about it. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God. To deal with these thoughts. How many, do, how many thoughts are we just passive to? And we don't rise up and begin to destroy it with the indignation and the wrath of God and the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Because we've never entered into the war. We've never engaged into the conflict which Jesus showed and demonstrated for us at Calvary. Listen to me. He's coming with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment upon all the ungodly for their ungodly deeds which they've ungodly committed. Believe it. That's not in the past. That's in the future. And how can we ride in true judgment with him? If we have given place to those things and we've fallen in love with those things and we've, we've, we've not really seen any real problem with them. We've not been along. We've not been along with him long enough in holiness to realize how he feels about unholiness. We've not walked enough with him in righteousness to really feel how he feels about unrighteousness. We've never walked with him enough in purity to really understand his indignation against impurity. You listen to me. Because we're the only possibility for a cure against an incurable wound. And I'm telling you right now, this nation, not the nation so much. The lost, but the church, more than anybody else that's responsible, we have to change. We're the only possible, we're the only possibility of redemption. We're the only possibility, if, it, if you would, of seeing this nation brought back to its knees and having another opportunity that I do not believe that next opportunity even it comes. Listen to me. You hear me. I do not believe that the next opportunity for this nation even gets to come before there's great devastation. It's already decrees written and sent forth. It's already done. The line's already crossed. The time to turn back and repent has already passed. All we can do now is prepare people how to stand in faith and righteousness and purity, how to stand in authority and the anointing, how to preach the gospel unwaveringly, no matter what comes out against them. That's it. And those who walk with him, those who abide in the shadow of the Almighty, those who dwell in the secret place, thousands shall fall by their side and 10,000 by their right hand shall not come near them. You shall walk through the fire and you shall not be burned. The water shall not overflow, you shall not drown. Hallelujah. You shall not fear by the arrow that flies by night or the pestilence that waxes or that wasteth by noonday. Hallelujah. Ha <laughs> ha. But there will be a fire coming forth from our mouth. A word of God and authority. Camp meetings will be again. The Holy Ghost will be, will be free to move. People won't be wondering about uh, how embarrassing it is for somebody to be caught up in the glory of heaven. It will be a shout of joy and a rejoicing sign to see that everybody will follow along with. The power of God once again will be more important to men than all the things that they love to, to have uh, heaped upon them from the praises and privileges of men. I want everybody to stand with me. See you from all sunny. You know, when I when I wrote this book called The Unlimited Authority of God, I did it for the nation of Nepal. Because the Lord showed me that the nation of Nepal would become a crossroads, a central conduit and roadway between the great empires of the last days. 
China, India, and the Middle East. And I could see in the spirit that I wouldn't be one there would be one day that I wouldn't be able to get there. And that the word of the Lord had filled my mouth that and it was in October 2011. And I was standing in the pulpit over there at 10180 Willow Creek Road. And I closed my eyes. And when I did, I had an open vision. In the open vision, I saw somebody who was deaf and they had no ears. And I said, Lord. I looked around, opened my eyes, I looked around, and I didn't see anybody who was no ears. And I thought, well, is this, or what are you showing me, Lord? And I thought, maybe it's somebody on the web, watch you on the web. And the Lord said, no, speak to a nation. Speak to a nation. Command them to hear. And then the Lord gave me the outline of this book. Gave me every one of the chapters of the book right there as I stood there that night. One after the other. All I had to do was go write out the notes because I went and got on the airplane. Within the next two weeks, sat there over the next two weeks writing out all the notes. The Lord had given me to go preach to a, a vast majority of the leadership of that nation in three different locations. We were just so honored to be able to do that. And I pray in Jesus' name that you come to understand that there is a limited opportunity for you. That you have it. It's not time to be growing and maturing in faith when every all upheaval is around you and things are coming down on your head. Now is the time to get established. If you can't keep up with the footman, what are you going to do in the day of the horses? If you can't walk with God in the depth of the anointing when there's this time, as it were, of all you know the peace and the quiet that we have that we've come to enjoy. By the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. What are you going to do in the day when there's upheaval all around you? Today, I want to just call you back. Every one of you, I want to call you back to a place of relentlessly living for God. Of being separated unto Him and separated unto the things of purity and holiness and godliness. The grace of God has appeared to us and the Holy Ghost has come. The Holy Spirit has come to teach us to deny ungodliness and worldly lust. And the Lord says, come out from among them. Come out from the world. Touch not the unclean thing. God says, be separate. Don't be conformed to the world. But be transfigured by the th thinking different about yourself, about living in the heavenly life. Your conversation is heaven. You're seated in heaven. You've been born of heaven. You've been translated to this kingdom of the dear son. You belong to the living God. Come apart. Be separate, says the Lord. That's his people. That's what, did you know that's what God named his people in the Old Covenant? He named them separated. We call it today Hebrew. The Hebrew. The Hebrew word is Ivrit. It means to be separated. Father standing on the other side. Literally, it's described like this. Father is standing on the other side of the flood. And he says to those who are uh, over on the other side opposite of him. He says, come over unto me. He says to you today, come over unto me and be separate as I am separate. And be holy as I am holy. Have no fellowship with darkness. Touch not anything that belongs to demon spirits and sin and iniquity. He cries out to the world, come over, come over unto me. And men say, I'm helpless, I cannot come. He says, the door is open before you. Call, and I will rescue you. I will come, and I will rescue you. And I will bring you over unto me. Ha. I will bring you over unto me. And having now been brought here, and standing with him on his side, seeing those who are on the Lord's side, and being on the Lord's side, you're now equipped and need to be equipped and fit for the battle. For there's nobody, there's no human being, no matter how anointed that they are, no matter how much time they've spent in the Word that is sufficient for the battle, they must be fit with the strength of the Lord and the power of His might. They must understand, I don't come with sword or shield or with the might or the arm of flesh, 
but with the name of the living God. They must understand the consequence of the battle. They must understand that just falling out to the enemy and falling out to sin. Because I'm going to tell you, Satan is such a master of his craft. Unless you are totally surrendered and committed to this place, he will be able to fix you into a place where it's easy for your mind to, con to instead of condemning the sin, to condone it. To justify it. To slip on into it. Oh, it's not so bad. Sneak into it. Just as bad as any sin that Adam committed. Just as bad as him partaking of the tree. Knowledge, good and evil. Just as bad as any sin or any iniquity that Satan did when he said, I will be like the most high God. I want more for me. It's got to become. It's got to become the intense treason that it is. It's got to become the act of defiance and rebellion against God that it is. It's got to become that which is worthy of eternal damnation that it is. You listen to me. One sin, one unrepented sin will bring eternal damnation to the soul of men. And it's got to become that real to us. It's got to become that consequential. And until it does, you're not fit for the battle. You're not equipped for the battle. Yesterday, or day before yesterday, I drove, accidentally, I drove a wire between my nail and my finger. And it was so painful. And I'm like standing there going, when is this pain going to stop? It shouldn't last this long. This is painful. And I thought about how that some of our POWs, and especially in World War I and World War II, how they were tortured like that because it is so painful. And how that they endured being kept awake for 72 hours and then brought into a room and tortured with all kinds of painful tortures to give up a little piece of information. And then unwilling to, to give up any information, they went back to be placed in a position where that they could have gone to sleep for another 72 hours, just maybe nap a little bit, constantly being woke up, to be brought back into a room to be tortured again. And this went on for weeks and went on for months. And they stood strong and valiant and gave up no information. And they didn't have the Holy Ghost. They were committed to a cause. I said they were committed to a cause. I said they were committed to a cause. Men are without excuse when witnesses such as that stand. For the purposes of men, for the purposes of a cause, of a government. There were those who showed what was inside of men if he's committed and consecrated to a cause. I'll die first. And here we stand as those equipped beyond all possible resources and divine ability that could be imagined. And constantly we fall out to the enemy. Constantly we're giving up information. Constantly we betray and commit the acts of treason. That most noble and just position <laughs> that has been purchased for us by Jesus to stand as the heirs of God and co-inheritors with Christ, sons of the Most High. It's time for a change. You're standing here today, and I'm petitioning you. You get to choose. If you want this world, you may have it. It's right there up for you. You have to do nothing but be assimilated. But if you want God, then make up your mind today that you're coming over to the other side to stand alongside of Him, to be separate, to not be conformed. Don't let the world tell you how to dress. Don't let the world tell you how to act. Don't let the world tell you what you're going to like and what you don't like. Don't let the world show you what is acceptable. Don't be conformed to them. Don't model after them. Don't say, oh, well, that's pretty and that's cute. So I'm going to dress like that. Or that is really a cool thing to go watch. So I'm going to go watch it too. And all the other things that this world runs after. Come on now. It's about time somebody say, you know what? I'm over here in a heavenly realm. I'm living and responding to things which are not seen. I look on that which is not seen, that I might bring heaven into a visible realm so that you can see it too. I want to bring something that's far better than the world the demon power has ever been able to give you. 
Somebody's going to have to be willing to live over in this realm called faith and look not on that which is seen. Somebody's going to have to be willing to live in this realm of faith and walk not by sight. Somebody's going to have to be willing to live in this realm of faith that lives by the Word of God. He lives here in this place, sanctified. Under, sanctified to live in the Holy Ghost. To walk out the life of obedience. This message, and messages like it, God would raise you up to go preach everywhere. In the backwood rural counties of Walla Walla or whatever it is. Up there in Northern California. Sandy, the streets of San Diego to New York, to Chicago. People, this is the only power under salvation, this word, this message of life. This is the only means for a nation to be turned back again. And no one will know, and no one will ever see unless you and I are willing to cross over and willing to live out this life separated unto the Lord to begin to receive those things that He wants to supply to us as we find ourselves consecrated, living only unto Him. So He can come fill us. So He comes speak to us in the night. If the, I want to encourage you between the meeting here this morning and tonight to go home and, and I want you to read that article that we have posted on our website from Fraudstrom. I don't know where would it be in the order. It's just like towards the bottom. If you go on our home page, there's a prophet. He traveled with, with Wigglesworth, with uh, Smith Wigglesworth, the great man of faith. And he was known as a prophet in the Assemblies of God when that movement still had the Holy Ghost and still functioned and flowed in the authority of heaven out of Pentecost. And he writes concerning the day we're living in right now. And you could hear it. You could see it. It was written back, I believe, in 1938 or, or right around in that time. And you'll, your hair will stand up on the back of your neck if you read it properly. He's prophesying what we're living in right now. And he's prophesying concerning the church, not the world. The state of the church. I want you to go read that. How many of you, you could just go read that? It won't take you long to read it. Let's go read it. Decide whose side you're on. Decide what kind of a person you're going to be, what manner of person you're going to be. I pray every one of you will decide for the Lord. You'll decide to follow Jesus. You decide to live in the Holy Ghost. You decide... To no longer be conformed to the world, but rather be conformed to the image of Christ. Ha. You decide no longer to walk after the spirit of this world, but walk after the mind of Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Everybody just raise your hands in this place. Set your hands towards heaven. I want to tell you right now, if you've never called upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, today is your opportunity to call upon him. Because this is the real church. And he's really here. It's not that you have to call upon the name of Jesus Christ in a church, but it sure helps. You call upon him and you say, you know, Lord, I don't want to live my life the way I've been living my life. I don't want to live in this world anymore. I'm done with sin and iniquity. It's, there's nothing here for me in this sorrow and pain. I want to understand what it means to live in heaven. I want to understand what it means to be born again. Come change me. Come renew me. Come strengthen me. Come make me everything you purposed me to be. Come make me what you purposed me to be when you formed Adam. And you formed Kava, Eve from the ground. You just call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and you'll be saved. And if, if that's, if it's in your heart to follow the Lord Jesus Christ, if it's in your heart to follow God and to follow Him in His ways, I would love to be able to pray for you. I'd love to be able to lay my hands upon you and command you to be strengthened by the strength of the Lord and the power of His might. would love to be able to minister to you and set your feet upon the right way and teach you to observe all that he's commanded 
If there's anyone here that's like that right now, you've never been born again. I'm telling you right now, until you're born again, you can't come into the kingdom of God. And I'm telling you, you're on your way to an eternity without God. If you choose not to have Christ Jesus in your life now, you will not have him in your life after you breathe out your last breath, which is where it all begins. Somebody said, how can you say it all begins at that time? Because that's where it lasts the longest. This is only for about 70, 80 years. That's going to be for eternity. That's where it all begins. You're deciding now. You're deciding this day. Right now. What your eternity will be. I break and bind every mind-blinding spirit. Every evil thing belonging to religion. Every evil thing belonging to secularism and humanism. I bind you, Satan. In Jesus' name, you may no longer hold those who are in this place under your power. There's no reason for anybody here to live another day without Christ Jesus. There's no one here, reason for anybody to walk out of this place and walk into an eternity without God. I'm telling you, walking out of here without calling upon the name of the Lord is walking into eternity without God. What do you choose? I plead with you. I beg you. Choose the kingdom of God. Choose this way of escape that God has made. I pray that your eyes be open that you might see where you're going. Because I know that no one would really want to continue on going in that direction if they could see where it is they're going. In Jesus' name. Today, choose this day whom you will serve. Choose this day and choose with absolute commitment, with absolute consecration, with absolute, with absolute dedication and surrender. In Jesus' name. Father, I thank you, Lord. You filled our mouths with your word. In this assembly place where we're at with your presence and with your spirit. And I pray, Father, in Jesus' name that every person here will step into the wisdom and revelation of you. Step into your mercy and the awe of who you are. That they'll never again find a day that they live apart from you. Apart from your purity. Apart from your holiness. And apart from your righteousness. I want to say this. Many people say, oh, I've been walking with the Lord. And He's always with me. been with me all the time. If you're not walking in righteousness, He's not with you. If you're not walking in holiness, He's not with you. If you're not walking in purity, he's not with you. If you're not walking in the Holy Ghost, he's not with you. That's what he said in his word. Now, I know people create their own religions because they can't find any that they like. But this is what God says in his word. He's invited us to come walk with him, to agree with him. He's not coming to agree with us. He is not going to fellowship with darkness, and he tells us to have no fellowship with it either. It is amazing how many people really believe that God's going to come and fellowship with them while they're walking in darkness when he told us as people to have no fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness or with people who walk in darkness. To cast them out of our presence, even. He said if there's a brother, one who calls himself a brother, and he has these behaviors going on in their life, drunkenness, immorality, he says don't even allow it. Don't even sit down and eat with them. And no company with them whatsoever. And yet people want to believe God's going to walk with them. It's a false hope. It's a false peace. It's a lie. Preached by false prophets. Those who declare something other than what God has said. That's what a false prophet is. Declare something that actually overthrows the word of God. You listening to me. I want you to start walking in, 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 in fear and reverence to him, to Papa, to God, to his word. Amen. Amen. Listen, we want to also give you an opportunity to share with us by way of giving. 
we believe that acts of obedience to the Lord creates great miracles. Smallest acts of obedience. Listen to me. The smallest acts of obedience. And I want you to do this in faith because this is the way Father set it up. Small act of obedience to call upon the name of the Lord worked the greatest miracle of salvation we could have ever imagined. The Lord just says, as we'll honor him with our substance and with the first fruits of our increase, he's going to cause a great blessing to come upon us. He's going to cause all grace to abound upon us so that we have all sufficiency in all things. And I'm going to tell you, just honor the Lord with your giving. Honor the Lord with your tithes and with your offerings because there's a miracle of financial blessing that the Father would work through us. That there could be within our hearts and within our lives. Listen to this. People that are like Joseph during the times of greater people. And I purpose to be a Joseph. I purpose to be a means by which. The blessings of God are available in times of great devastation and famine. And I want you to purpose that for yourself. Just to cooperate with God. I mean tell you right now. I don't care how hard it is. I don't care how much opposition. You faithfully commit yourself to doing what is right. And you're going to end up blessed. I don't care what you come up against. What things look like at times. You faithfully obey God and walk with God. I'm going to tell you right now. You're going to have every blessing that God described. It's going to be in your life. That's just the way it is. So come worship the Lord with your giving.